Welcome into the War Room. I'm your host, Owen Troyer. It's Monday, December 5th, 2017. And there's been some haze around the story that surfaced as anti-Trump text messages found on Mueller's team. It then came out that it was a guy, Peter Stroke. Now more is being revealed about Peter Stroke. Specifically, the interesting intel here is that it's been Peter Stroke who's been in charge of handling Hillary Clinton's email investigation and interviews into that, uh, as well as the Flynn interviews, as well as, in fact, you know what? I've got that list right here. Oh, yes, that's right. Uh, the Comey investigation, as well as members of Obama's team. So basically, You've got Peter Stroke, who has been handling all of these interviews for the FBI, Clinton's emails, Flynn, you know, different Obama administrators, et cetera, et cetera, James Comey. He's also basically used verbiage in these accounts with Clinton and Comey to help them escape any justice but now all of the sudden all of the people that peter stroke has interviewed flynn is the one charged with lying amazing amazing even though it was clinton and comey both caught lying as well and the list goes on so we're going to get more into that but here is sarah carter from circa news she's been all over this reporting how biased Mueller's legal team actually is. I'd like to know, by the way, I'm hearing rumors all over the place, Sarah Carter. There are other anti-Trump text emails out there and we know about them. You're hearing correctly, Sean, and I think a lot more is going to come out. In fact, I know a lot more is going to come out based on the sources I've spoken to. The Inspector General's report and investigation uh, is ongoing. The Parts of that report are expected to come out before the end of December, and the rest of it is expected to come out after the first of the year. I think we're going to be stunned at what they uncover. I want to ask this. Okay, so this is incredible. So Sarah Carter reporting that. She's got sources. She wouldn't be making that up. And then these are all the headlines today. Wall Street Journal, Mueller's credibility problem. Fox News, FBI agent fired from Russian probe, oversaw Flynn interviews, softened Comey language on Clinton email actions. Actually, I'm not sure if he has been fired, to be honest with you. I think he got demoted. Daily Caller, this is huge. FBI blocked information about Peter Stroke from its website. So now all of a sudden, Peter Stroke is ghosted and all of his information from the FBI's website. Okay. Then this breaks out of the intercept. Trump White House weighing plans for private spies to counter deep state enemies. And it basically says the Trump administration is going to be working with Eric Prince of Blackwater. And Mike Pompeo, the new CIA director, is basically going to get his own team of spies, essentially, to spy on the spies. So if you didn't understand the civil war that's going on right now, Rest assured, it is full-fledged civil war right now inside the White House. And you've got Peter Stroke, you've got Mueller, you've got Comey, you've got the Clintons, you've got all the Obama holdovers. That is the deep state. All of them want Trump out. All of them spied on Trump. All of them have been colluding to get Trump out, making up the Russian story, making up the Russian dossier, all of this stuff, all made up by that deep state. Now... Perhaps we're seeing the first signs of evidence that Trump is fighting back. But this comes out. Special counsel's office statement of expenditures. This is from the U.S. Justice Department. You know how much money has been spent on the Trump-Russia probe? Three million dollars and counting. It's time to end this witch hunt now and stop wasting the taxpayers' dollars. Welcome to the War Room. It is Monday, December 5th, 2017. I'm your host, Owen Schroyer. Roger Stone will be back joining us today in the second hour as usual. 
with all of the news out of the White House. And I'm sure, well, at least I'll have some questions for him about Peter Stroke. I'll have some questions for him about Trump's administration's consideration of hiring a spy team of its own. We're and I'm also going to hear from, podcast. we're also going to hear from Alex Jones here in the first hour. No, and Pat Raleigh with his son. Bring him on over. Hey, can we get, uh, can we get Alex a chair and mic, please? Come on, sit down, Alex. I, I actually no, no, want to know. I'm going to leave, but listen. Do you know about this, Alex? Trump you... uh, gossip editor rocked, or no, top gossip editor rocked by sex. Allegations. No, I don't know. No, I'm talking about this story. Trump White House weighing plans for private spies to counter deep state enemies. So now they're going to be working with Eric Prince from Blackwater, and Mike Pompeo is basically going to set up his own team of spies to go against the anti-Trump people inside the yes, I did know about that. So it looks like they're going full bore and they're, they are. What do you think you're doing that. here, my friend? <laughs> uh, well, I thought I was working for Russia. What are you telling me? I don't work for Russia. No, you work for America. Oh, OK. But Darn it. We, oh. But we weren't even engineered by Trump to do it. We're organically doing it. We are the resistance. Anyways, this is huge breaking news. I mean, I was aware of some of this behind the scenes. You know, notice Pompeo went and talked to uh, William Benny was on today. Yeah, yeah. Former head of the NSA confirming it's all fake. I just thought I'd pop in and say you're doing a great job. Well, thank you, Alex. And uh, you Super had a great interview. Super this really great new video. And then they had a tweet article saying I was alone on Thanksgiving. Huh. But not only do I not have my children, no one that works here can have children. This is a fake baby right here. This isn't even happening. This is a robot baby. <laughs> No, it's true. I'm totally alone. Look I at how family. upset that baby doesn't look like it's I'm happy totally here alone. at all. The baby doesn't even eat real meat. I'm totally alone. I have no family. Guys, type in the newest article. It's Alex Jones can't keep uh, bellowing over his guests like I'm doing right now. <laughs> but, but it's all edited. Bellowing. But the point is they show a shot of me on Thanksgiving saying it's a fake turkey that I had no family. Oh, like Sarah Sanders pie thing, too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But, but, but just like here. None of this is real. I have no friends here either. No. Not even a tree right But now. notice, no, no, that's no. the demoralization because the liberals in their own documents know their constituents are alone on average. They want to make their viewers feel like they're like us, alone like them, because they want to project what's happened to them onto us. In fact, you go to my Twitter where I was you know, doing the Christmas tree last night. Those aren't my kids. That's all fake, they claim. Probably. You're even fake. I'm, I'm computer Tr generated. Trump winning the election was fake. It never happened. Never happened. No, it, it was Russia. Russia did it. Can you guys just type into uh, uh, Google? In fact, I can pull the article up here. Just, just type in Alex Jones can't stop bellowing, which is true. It's by Super Deluxe. I'm a big fan of it. There we go. No, that's not it. You have to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not it. <laughs> you have to go to click YouTube. Click. No, not YouTube. Click Google. I'm going in there. I'm going to do it. I'll pull it up. Get the video. There it is. There it is. <laughs> then they say the media is saying that's really me. Look, wait. Now, the, <laughs> now scroll down. Scroll the down. The image on the left. Yeah, now scroll down. Look at this. They say I was alone on Thanksgiving. Look, I tweeted out in the very same tweets. Who took the picture? Me with then? my family. Oh, it was a robot. Oh, the robot took the picture of you then. Yeah, but what's funny is, is that again, even if I was alone, that's so mean. But that's the type of stuff they're into. It shows the incredible sickness. Yes, I'm all alone, ladies and gentlemen. We're failing. Misery we're, loves company. We're nobody. Anyways, I just popped in. That is huge news. When did that break? Uh, this actually came out last night, but I didn't see it till this morning on The Intercept. You know, why did it not get any attention? That is huge. It uh, wasn't on Drudge either. was not on Drudge. The Intercept keeps doing great work. <clears throat> yeah, so, so this is going to be interesting. You know, Pompeo was a guy that I think was part of the entire movement of patriots to try to get Trump into the office, and that's why he got paid off with the CIA director role. I don't think paid off. Well, paid off for lack of a better phrase. Rewarded. Basically, yeah, he's a patriot. He, Trump says, look, you're going to be loyal. You're going to go with the Make America First and, and like, Great he met Agenda. With, with, we had that exclusive today from William Benning. What happened in the meeting? Yeah. So so Pompeo knows what's going on. Trump knows what's going on. The entire intelligence apparatus knows that the Russian collusion story is entirely fake. And I think but Joy that, Bayard uh, says it's real. But, but, but see, that's the sad thing is that people like Joy Behar actually believe right, this. Can you believe that? All you I sure you don't want to sit down? Can we get it? Just give, just sit down. Can we get Pat in here with the robot baby? Come on. No, Pat sits down with the baby. Now, this baby, though, this baby could be a Russian agent. I don't know this. What this, if they start the rumor that it's... What if they start so, the rumor that it's our baby? Mm. Oh. I mean, not in Hillary's. <laughs> oh. Well, it'd be nice. I mean, you know, Hillary's already had uh, Webb Hubble's <laughs> baby, so... <laughs> no, it is. Look. Oh, here we go. I got proof. Come on now. I'm bellow. I got proof. Quit bellowing over Hillary. I got, I got, I got proof that Trump assaults women. 
<laughs> That's it. Breaking. Trump caught putting Hillary in a headlock. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised, you know, when he saw Hillary, he didn't start oh, sorry, freaking sure out. That baby's good enough to eat. No. It, it it takes its carnivore before it eats a raw steak, though, right? Yeah. Zebra, so. zebra meat? Yeah. That's good. But raw? He learned that from Uncle Tuck. Carnivore? <laughs> Tuck Buckford? Is that where he gets his intel? That's his uncle? <laughs> uncle Tuck Buckford. He's just waiting for Tuck Very Buckford's nice next show. show. <laughs> he is staring me down right now. First look at Hillary Clinton's baby. So this is breaking right now. All right, radio listeners, I'm going to leave. Let you get back to your important work. Alex, you can you know you can sit right down. I, I'd love to have you on. I know, I know. I just thought I'd pop in because uh, we were taking care of some business in there. Whoa, that's a scary Christmas tree. Hey, is that is that microphone hot under him, guys? We're, yeah, well, that's a little trick for people. Seriously, though, Alex. What? Remember the caller? Because this the, there was a caller into your show yesterday that had something that really kind of stuck out to me when he said, you know, how much do we invest into Trump? And it kind of made me really think it's like how, you know, because every day Hillary walks free, I lose a little bit of tolerance. Not that that's even Trump's fault. You know, if anything, we look at the, you know, Sessions and the Department of Justice. It's about getting sovereignty back. It's about getting rid of the permanent deep state government that's out of control. It's about bringing back accountability. It's not like we hedge our bets or something. The globalists, the Republican and Democratic establishment are cancer. They've, they're arrogant. They're out of control. They've got to be removed. Uh, and that's what this is all about. It's not about hedging our bets. We're getting wild results right now uh, because the country's been artificially suppressed. But seriously, I just popped in here. you got a big show, radio affiliates out there, people watching on the Internet. I was just having some fun with Super Deluxe saying I interrupt my own show, so I thought I would. Uh, you're, you're bowling over me right now. Bellowing. Be oh, bellowing. And bowling. Bo and bowling. You're bowling and bellowing. Bowling would be if I was crapping all over the desk. Well, you that, forgot your uh, carnivore, so, you know, you do need to take They say carnivore. that's why Hillary, you know, was gone for a few hours. She collapsed like a sack of meat a year and a half ago on 9-11 because they say she just absolutely, like, they said it was like 50 pounds. That, that they, was fake news. No, though. she said she had, no, seriously, they were saying, Secret Service said that, that uh, Hillary felt a lot better after that because she was reportedly, they said John Wayne had 50, 40 pounds of that just doesn't mean. Hillary had 55 pounds of undigested small children in her stomach. Well, she coughed She coughed some of them up when she was uh, at that one speech she was giving on her campaign. She coughed some of that up. It, Can we pull up Hillary Clinton gives birth to alien there was so There was so much of that undigested uh, caca that some of it actually, <laughs> some <laughs> of it actually came back from up. break. We're going to play the famous YouTube video. It's got like 3 million views. Uh, uh, Hillary Clinton gives birth to alien uh, creatures. And, and, of course, this is all satire. We're not being serious. Uh, this, this is satire, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but uh, so when we come back from break, we'll play that. Seriously, I'm out of here. Right. Owen, you're doing a fabulous right. job. Just really wanted to come in here and. You wanted to come in here and bellow over me. Well, just the weirdness you factor kind of had a hangover effect, you know, with the kid and the. You're not here. Yeah, he's fake. Baby. He's not. He's not. Bellowing. We're demoralized. We're losing. Just like Hillary said in the WikiLeaks, my constituents are losers all alone in their basements. And it's true. I live in a basement. I'm all alone. The turkey's fake. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I, I've never even, the, the babies are all fake. I've never even been married. Yeah, you don't even have kids. How can you lose the I've kids never you've never even, even had? I've never, I've never even been with a woman. It must be tough. But uh, seriously, though, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I just thought we did. Super Deluxe is on to me. Can you imagine their targeted demographic, though, is people to go, look, he's alone. He doesn't have friends because in their own demographics, Time Warner admits, too, they're targeting losers. So literally, they like go, losers will want to hear he's a loser to keep on the reservation where they have simulated wins eating Hot Pockets in, be play, you know, in between playing video games. They sit there and watch me on these shows, and then and it's all and they go, look, his eyes are bloodshot, and it's fake. I mean, this is hilarious. <laughs> there you are, Alex. <laughs> they sound like what kind of camera? We have the most expensive cameras here just to make you look normal, because normally that's how you would look without a camera. Well, they, they took off that special filter. I mean, I still do kind of look that good, actually, but, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, there's been a lot of conspiracy theories about Hillary Clinton's health. Yeah, she was in the hospital for a year having brain surgeries, and she can hardly walk, and... It's always falling down. It looks like she's having seizures. And yeah, WikiLeaks admits that she was trying to get Parkinson's medication. But let's forget all that. The fact is, she's out there giving speeches every day and has to cancel them, having these coughing fits that are associated with different arrhythmias and heart problems. But listen, it doesn't matter to me. She proved 
just a few days ago in Cleveland that she is incredibly healthy. When, well, what goes in must come out, like out of the movie Creeps. It goes in your mouth, it comes out of your mouth. Inside you. They get in through your mouth and you walk around while they incubate. It was like Linda Blair and the Exorcist spewing green pea vomit on the priest. <laughs> or maybe it was more like a film made a little bit later, just a few years ago, Team America, when Kim Jong-il is finally killed, we learned he was just a puppet. for you, Kim Jong-il. For a more advanced species that actually escaped from the stars. So whatever's happening, though, clearly Hillary has entered that genre of the creeps, or Team America, or yes, the exorcist, because when it comes to overthrowing countries and killing hundreds of thousands of Christians, Linda Blair ain't got jack crap on Hillary Rodham Clinton. I'm Alan Jones for InfoWars.com. <laughs> Well, our mother is giving birth to a rather platypus bird as well. Oh, yeah. No, not the Trump. Not him, the enemy. Oh, yeah, mommy. There's Hillary's. This is exclusive footage of Hillary's rear end. Yes, friends. The planet is ours. Oh, yeah. What do you think about Hillary with the email scandal with the DNC? How they stole it from Bernie? Um. Disturbing. Oh, my gosh. So that's what you get when Super Deluxe puts out a new Alex Jones video. You get a fired up Alex Jones, and then you go into a time machine. And you look at a classic, Alex Jones, from when Hillary Clinton... Okay, but, but, but like seriously, like we're having fun here, but I mean, really, what was that? I mean, seriously, has anyone ever actually addressed this? Has a doctor ever explained what that was? I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what? I was going to take calls on, you know, how is Trump doing? You know, if you put your all the house money on Trump, do you feel like it's a good bet still and all that? But you know what? What in the hell came out of Hillary's mouth? I mean, seriously, can I get a doctor here? Let me get a doctor to call in. What came out of Hillary Clinton's mouth? Look at this. What is that? That's not even small stuff. No, not the Trump. Not him, the enemy. Oh, mommy. <laughs> There's Hillary Clinton's rear end exclusive footage we have. Wow. So Hillary Clinton... And she's also got, like, all these lesions on her tongue. She has to wear anti-seizure glasses. She literally falls over. She's having all these coughing fits. And then I have to sit here today and listen to fake media, fake news, literally talking about how Trump is unfit and has dementia. What? But no problem with Hillary's health when she's failing. She's doing things that are you don't even know what they are, coughing things up into what? So what did Hillary, I mean, seriously, did Hillary really cough up an alien life form into a glass? Obviously not. Okay, but really, like, she has a medical condition. What was it? All right, so, but here, no more waiting. Here is Super Deluxe, the most recent Super Deluxe video of Alex Jones. They think that this somehow hurts Alex and hurts us. No, it actually puts more wind in our sails and entertains us. So here's the latest from Super Deluxe. Roy Moore. 30 plus years ago, total women, some of them who might have been under 18, they were pretty. Well, you know, and I mean, I mean, all the time, I'll sit there. Well, I've got three daughters, but I'll sit there, you know, at a, at a play or whatever, and tell girls, you sure look nice. It, it's the it's Hollywood. They're the ones all doing it. That's like a Texas thing. They say don't even do it. And I'm like, like, hey, sweetie, how you doing? I'll say to you know, like, wait, just come over. How you doing, darling? Yeah, you can't. And, and like Northerners go, what the hell? That woman just called you, darling. Yeah, you can't say. Darling. That's what you do in in the South. It, it's it. You you can't even. <laughs> and these are women on Facebook. We don't oh, even know. Oh, Shepard, he's of course denying it all. I can't get a word in, huh? Well, 
uh, you know, no no one's... You just know this is the next for everybody. <laughs> this, this is it. <laughs> Thank you, Super Deluxe. Uh, but, you know... Uh, and then, oh, they make it so uncomfortable that if you're with your kids at the park, you're not supposed to talk to other people in their families if you're a male. But then meanwhile, they, they allow the sexualization of children. Yeah. It goes on and on and on. And, the, and that's that's how the new world order is coming about. And pretty soon. Well, come back and join us soon. <laughs> Saturday Night Live, the big bellwether, the canary in the coal mine that killed its ratings going after Trump and all their lies and calling me racist with no proof. Alec Baldwin, Alex Jones, very racist. Darren, what do you make of this? These guys are funny. I'll admit a lot of And I do too, but funny. why won't they let us escape? So they can't just be anti-Trump all the time. It's it's killing the ratings, the, the, the ratings, and the, but the, it's it's the, it's the, the globalism. But look, you got a stack of articles there. Give us some of those headlines. I'm going to play this. This one uh, is pretty huge. I don't think you've seen this one yet. This article only lasted for 24 hours, and they pulled it. I saw it. I saw it today because it showed that basically it was Hillary. Yes, the DNC and the Clinton campaign. And what's incredible is we've got to watch this and keep track of it because that's where the propaganda is. And people like, that's where they get- the You've been saying that for the seven years you've been here in InfoWars. You know, because I, I, this is a the thing. They've got a big problem. Trump, 10 months in, 11 months in is delivering. They're losing influence is what- I agree, so I'm not against Democrats or Republicans. I'm against the Democrats because they became so selfish or, 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 inwardly focused or, 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 Stalinistic. But we've got the big news here, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, that's funny stuff. The body is nothing more than 90% I mean, obviously, Edit. oh, oh, this has to be classic. You focus all your effort on- Isn't it a colony organism? Isn't the body really a colony organism? I've seen the studies like hundreds of times more powerful than a geese's system. We've got like total radio transmitter. Our brain's like this huge pickup system, huge radio receiver. It's not 90% evil and 10% good. Right now, the- No, 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 I, I'm not trying to, I agree that we're turning the All tide. All right, guys, I'm sure that we have the They're full video at Infowars.com. I'm sure that we're going to go ahead and share that ourselves. That's how much it offends us. You know, that's how sensitive we are here, uh, that we'll go ahead and share that video. But they actually kind of blew it, super deluxe. They needed to pull the video when Alex is wearing the tinfoil hat and talking over Ed Group. That is much- funnier than the clip that they decided to pull because he's got the tinfoil hat on and it's just classic okay but so we had some fun here we do have some serious news but even even about what alex was just talking about how it's kind of this whole demonizing men sexual assault thing left and right to come back on trump is now kind of having its negative side effects so we'll get into that and we've got some callers we're going to take a lot of your calls today on the other side it's alex jones it's super deluxe it's Infowars. it's Okay, we're going to try to wrestle and uh, wrangle this broadcast back into sanity here. And then I have one of our cameramen drop off a nice bag of money. Shredded money. I didn't even know that the Federal Reserve did this. Apparently, they just shred up millions and millions of dollars every year, and then they sell it in these bags. <laughs> so if you want to know how much your money is actually worth, there you go, right there, nothing. And that's what Rand, uh, Ron Paul actually put out a tweet today right after the Alex Jones show saying, if someone was going to give you $10,000, in what form would you take it? You cannot touch it for 10 years. Gold was leading the way. Bitcoin was in second. And then I think Federal Reserve note in third. And then a, I don't remember what was the other option, maybe a bond. I think it was a treasury bond was the fourth option. Uh, here's the tweet. For some reason, the uh, poll doesn't want to pull up there. Um, yeah, there you go. Go ahead and vote on that, however you feel. Oh, you're not signed in. You better sign in. Well, folks, we have been having some fun. Alex Jones is having some fun today. The Alex Jones Show was great today. He had Ron Paul on. He had William Benny. And we're about to get Roger Stone on with all of his breaking news. And it's all possible because of your support at InfoWarsStore.com. And right now, we are running DNA Force at 33% off. And this is, of course, one of our most powerful products, one of our most groundbreaking products, market-changing products, to be quite honest with you, uh, with you DNA Force. 
I've had amazing testimonials submitted to me. 33% off DNA Force right now. This is a product I take every morning and every night. Help energize mitochondrial function with DNA Force, and it is 33% off right now. Another product that I take every morning is Vitamin Mineral Fusion, which is 50% off right now. There's a lot of vitamins and a lot of minerals that you need to keep your body operating. Very important things, and you just don't get them in your everyday diet. That's why Vitamin Mineral Fusion was created by InfoWarsStore.com. All the vitamins and minerals that you're not getting from your diet, you can find in Vitamin Mineral Fusion, and it's 50% off right now. Great thing for the kids, too. It's just a nice little fruit drink. You can mix it with some juice. That's what I like to do. It tastes great, and it's healthy for you. And don't forget about our toothpaste, another product I use, Super Blue Fluoride-Free Products. That's the toothpaste. That is the mouthwash. And that is also 50% off right now. Squeaky clean teeth, literally, with Super Blue Toothpaste. It's amazing. So check out all the products at InfoWarsStore.com. All kinds of specials going on right now. Take advantage of the specials. We've got gift cards, T-shirts, hats, all different supplements, new supplements, old supplements. It's all at InfoWarsStore.com. And that is how you support us. That is how you thumb your nose at Jake Tapper and all of the fake news anchors out there. Okay, so I've got just basically any kind of topic right now that you could go to on the phone lines, 888-201-2244, 888-201-2244. I mean, where should we begin? Uh, you've got all this stuff with men harassing women. Now it's coming back on to the other side of things with women. Now men are wondering how to treat women without being considered uh, you know, an assaulter. Uh, John Conyers, you know, you wanna talk about arrogant. First of all, John Conyers isn't even, he's trying to take this classy, basically. He gets accused of all the sexual harassment. Now the latest is he's, he's literally um, basically running his hand up women's legs and, and skirts during church. So instead of doing the right thing and riding off into the sunset without trying to save his already tarnished legacy, he's going to go ahead and nominate his son for his position and his he's retiring in style. It's really just absurd. And again, though, there's an overarching issue here that is being lost because of this political civil war going on and all the polarization of these assault accusations, you know, other than Weinstein and Kevin Spacey, I have not heard of any actual legal action, any litigation, any action from law enforcement. So you really just have to wonder what is the deal with all of this? So we'll take your calls on that. We get the numbers here. The budget for the special counsel. Now, but this isn't even the entire budget, and I should have said this in the opening segment. This is just from May 17th to September 30th. So this isn't even their full budget, but, but this is enough to know what's going on here. Oh, my gosh. I'm telling you, folks, if this doesn't make your blood boil, because not only... $3.2 million for Mueller's special counsel from May 17th to September 30th this year. $3.2 million. $1.7 million of that? Guess where it's going, folks? Personal compensation and benefits. You know what that means? Mueller and his cronies literally pocketing cash. Literally pocketing cash. Now, here's a story from Politico, guys. When is that one from? This one is from... Oh, this one's from today. I didn't even see this. This just came out today. Russia probe cost Department of Justice $6.7 in months after Mueller appointment. So, so yeah, so that makes sense because this is about half the time. So, that, so there you go, $6.7 Hey, click that report link, guys. Let me see what that report that they're linking to is just real quick. Is that the same thing I have? Okay, so I don't know where they're getting the rest of that, those funds from. 
because this is only from May to September. So they somehow have tracked down the, the other $3 million on that. So how about that over, over almost $7 million spent on this witch hunt to Trump, and most of that money is literally going right into these people's pockets. Quote, unquote, personal compensation and benefits. This is absurd. And so maybe that's why the story from The Intercept comes up. Trump White House weighing plans for private spies to counter deep state enemies. Yeah, let's uh, we've already seen the reports that have come out about Mueller and Stroke and everything going on within that team. Totally biased, totally anti-American, criminal cover-ups and activity up to their eyeballs with Mueller and, and, and Rosenstein, McCabe and all of them, all linked together, all colluding, and it's all coming back. And I really do hope that there is a true movement to counter the anti-American Mueller team and the anti-American deep state that is trying to destroy President Trump and this country. So we can take your calls on that as well. Uh, just other news here real quick. We're about to take a break. Uh, I've got a weird segment from Don Lemon last night where he admits that he was a victim of child sex abuse as a kid. Uh, so very strange stuff there. You've got the Supreme Court right now hearing the same-sex marriage cake case. I'll give you my opinion on that. You want to talk about a waste of time. My goodness. Uh, what's a bigger waste of time? The investigation into the Trump-Russia collusion that doesn't exist or the Supreme Court having to hear a gay couple cry because a bakery wouldn't make their cake? I mean, wow. How, here's an idea. Grow up. Make your own cake. Go to the next bakery. No, let's make a whole national issue out of your cake. <laughs> I mean, if that isn't a sign that this country, I mean, it's incredible. Scott Walker has a plan to test, uh, drug test food stamp users. I'll tell you my opinion on that. Mitt Romney is trying to make himself relevant again. That's only going to come back to bite his attempt to run for office in Utah because Trump is now signaling for Orrin Hatch to stick around. So we'll have all that news and your phone calls on the other side. This is the war room. The deep state is trying to take America out. We won't stand for it. Welcome back to the war room. You want to talk fake news? I got some fake news. Oh, we got some fake news. Don't worry. CNN and MSNBC are still broadcasting, so fake news will be a plenty. Here's the latest fake news. The bank records said to have been seized and investigated by Mueller and his team, special counsel, fake news. Fake news. I don't know where that originated. I saw it on Drudge Report this morning about 9 o'clock. But now it's fake news. No surprise. No surprise. Just like Joy Behar clapping and jumping up and down like a deranged lunatic over fake news. This is the latest fake news. So you know what happened? All the good liberals woke up. They saw it this morning. Oh, they got Trump. They got his bank records. Oh. Just like Joy Bayer, Bayer Bear. And then turns out it's fake news. And again, just like the Joy Bear Bear thing, they just you just give them a little morsel. These people are so starved for anything. Any any actual thing of substance to come from the special counsel into Trump Russia that they will fall for the tiny little morsel of fake news. Uh, we're contemplating maybe it was ABC. I think I actually thought I first saw it on CNN. Here's go to the audio real quick of Joy Bear. Here's Joy Bear. Donald Trump directed him to make contact with the Russians. Yeah. <laughs> and then the whole. <laughs> yeah. And then the entire place goes crazy. It's literally fake news. Literally fake news. Not even real. So then, you know, the same thing happened today when the reports came out about Mueller looking at Trump's bank records. Total fake news. So was it ABC fake news again or was it CNN this time? And again, just a tiny little speck of a morsel for these people. And they'll lean in on it like it's a five-course meal. And then you just pull the table. But the Muslim ban. So now you've got the Muslim ban. They're saying Muslim ban this, Muslim ban that, Muslim ban. 
It's not a Muslim ban. If it was a Muslim ban, the countries with the most Muslims would be banned. But they're not. And so here, let me just go now to this ACLU action that I got this morning because I just love countering the ACLU. These people. The Supreme Court, this is directly from the ACLU's Cecilia Wang, the deputy leader, uh, legal director, a total nitwit. The Supreme Court just allowed Trump's illegal, unconstitutional Muslim ban to go into a full effect while it is being litigated. Okay, <laughs> so just right there, that statement is so wrong it's not even funny. Oh, oh, really? If it was illegal and unconstitutional, would the Supreme Court have allowed it? And what do you mean litigated? What, what legal battle? Are there lawsuits? Are people being sold litigated? No, this is a mandate. Just days after the president, just days after President Trump tweeted racist videos targeting Muslims. Now, see this. You can put it all into perspective with this. President Trump retweets raw video of an actual event where a Muslim migrant is bullying and beating up and, and in some cases pushing off the roof other people. And instead of being upset with that, the liberals are upset with Trump. So Trump just shows you a, a real video of what actually happened, doesn't even comment or say anything, just puts it out there. And then the left freaks out more over him doing that than the actual violence in the video. Back to the ACLU. This discriminatory ban prevents people from several Muslim-majority countries from coming to the United States. Oh, you mean the countries were bombing? The American public has repeatedly rejected Trump's bans in the streets and in the courts. No, that's not the American public. That's the brainwashed public by fake news and the Obama judges. And so this is how the ACLU lies and tries to indoctrinate people into a false set of beliefs. But again, just like they are more freaked out with Trump retweeting an actual video of something that happened, this is the funniest thing. Trump reportedly informs, uh, so, so basically Trump, has, you've heard this, that now he wants to move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. So now all the liberals are like, oh my gosh, look at President Trump. How dare he want to move the embassy to Jerusalem? Doesn't he know that that's bad and violent and how he's trying to now encourage violence by doing that? Wait a second. How is that encouraging violence? Oh, because radical Muslims are going to try to blow it up? Oh, I see. So because of radical Islamic extremists that like blowing things up and being violent, Trump's the bad guy. That makes sense. So Trump wants to put the embassy in Jerusalem. And because there's a bunch of 8th century Islamists over there that want to blow everything up that, that has anything to do with Jewish, Jew, the Jewish faith, that's Trump's fault. So now we have to kowtow to radical Islamic bullying and the threat that they'll blow us all up and kill us. That's what the that's what the liberals want Trump to do now. And then they also align themselves with that part of Islam. I mean, this is this is how, you know, they've completely lost their minds. But today, the Supreme Court is hearing a same sex marriage cake case. Literally, they're talking about cake in the Supreme Court today while there's a, a civil war going on right now for this country's future. And guess what? I got news for you. The Supreme Court is going to hold up. Yes, you don't have to make their cake. And it's going to shock the liberals, even though it shouldn't be shocking at all. All right, let's go out to the phone lines now. Let's start with John in Houston, Texas. Go ahead, John. Hey, how's it going? Uh, just real quick about the tongue thing with Hillary. It's actually a really sinister. Um, apparently, if you eat people's brains, there's a disease. You can look it up. Uh, the, in the highlands of Papua New Guinea, there's cannibals that eat, and this is where the disease is found, and it's all over the Internet. And uh, basically, every single symptom you've seen of Hillary Clinton, where she's like unable to control herself, unable to stand up, laughing maniacally, kind of inappropriately, and also having other weird issues. Uh, it's this disease called like Kua Kua or something. It's literally based at the Kuru. The disease is K U R U, Kuru. It's on Wikipedia, and uh, it's literally caused by eating brains. Yeah, and that's 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 uh, that's creepy. But that's what that's as far as uh, that's the most accurate description for her symptom. Actually, oh, okay. Well, that's an interesting one. We just looked it up. All right. So, um, 
The caller from Houston thinks Hillary Clinton might have Kuru from being a cannibal and eating human brains. All right. Okay, John, what do you got on uh, Flynn pleading guilty? Yeah, uh, no, Flynn pleading guilty. I was going to say that uh, maybe we could be a little optimistic and hope that Mueller is um, still, you know, on America's side a little bit. And maybe, just maybe, he's actually going to use this as a segue to uh, bust people in the deep state who had been doing So I've heard, I, I've heard this theory brandied about lately on talk radio and it really i i i've thought it before and i would say i have maybe a five percent faith in that yeah. it, it, it really just doesn't make sense because if you look at flynn's past the guy's been a swamp creature i mean the guy is the mm -hmm. definition of a swamp creature so why would i think he's changed all of a sudden when his actions haven't proven that i yeah i don't think it's about him changing as much as I think it's about him kind of uh, Mueller putting a squeeze on him and kind of getting him stuck between a rock and a hard place. So, um, see, I think it's the opposite. I think, I think Mueller is so embedded with this corruption in the deep state that he's been put into a position where he really can't win because he has to protect his own interest by protecting all the swamp creatures. And so he's doing this fake probe into Trump. I mean, I don't know. We'll wait and see the results. I, I just, I don't know. I, I just don't see it, sh see it shaking down that way. Thank you for the call, John. Let's squeeze in Nick in Detroit, who says uh, Walmart is now selling Antifa merchandise. Is that true? Hello? Yes, hi. Hi, Owen. Hi, Owen. Uh, I love the show. I love Rob Dew and Leanne McAdoo. Um, they're great. Me and my wife love to watch you. Uh, Rob Dew put out um, the other day, I watched, Antifa is selling T-shirts uh, on Walmart, at Walmart online now, which shows you how mainstream these guys are and how funny it is. Is that real? Yeah. Ask Rob Dew. Yeah, absolutely. It's real. Walmart selling Antifa shirts. It's insane. Yeah, and, and now you have a you have a Swedish. I can't remember if it was an ambassador. Guys, look this up. I think it was Swedish ambassador pictured with his daughter wearing an Antifa shirt. Yeah, it, it just shows how uh, fake they are and how controlled opposition. They're basically the new Bolshevik revolution. You know, they're totally. Oh, they're the brown them. shirts. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. And then they're indoctrinating the youth and they they just push the lies that are created by the mainstream. You know, it's really sad because these people really have had their future stolen from them by the corrupt globalists. But Trump wants to give them their future back and they just don't get it. All right, so you heard my breakdown in the last segment. It's It's like, but it's... It's, it's the same thing with every time a liberal tries to... I really don't even know how to explain it, to be honest with you. How do you side yourself? I mean, it, it's Stockholm Syndrome. And this clip that we're about to play from the president of Turkey, Erdogan, says everything. Where he says, recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's capital may embolden extremists. But, but see, it's not... They don't... Uh, I, I literally can't even wrap my mind around it. Trump is somehow the bad guy. It's like, let's say, okay, let's say I want to go to a ball game. Let's, okay, let's say a big, a big rivalry is, let's say, Ohio State and Michigan football. Let's say I'm an Ohio State fan and I want to go to the Michigan game in Michigan and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to the Ohio State Michigan at Michigan and then the Michigan fans are like, oh, if you come to this game, we're going to beat you up and we're going to have you arrested and we're going to beat you to a bloody pulp. And then I'm like, OK. And then everyone on the outside is like, don't you think about going to that game? Don't you think about trying to spur them into beating you up? Don't you? If you go to that game, it's your fault. If they beat you up, you are the bad guy. That's basically what they're saying to Trump for wanting to put the capital and the embassy in Jerusalem. So here's Erdogan saying that this is Trump's fault for emboldening extremists. It might end any possibility for a two-state solution or the potential of violence. All right, big decision to be made there. How serious is the threat of violence? 
Well, we've seen violence spark up not only here in Jerusalem, but across the Middle East, uh, you know, time and time again. There is the real potential for violence. Whether or not it happens, that's not clear. Um, but the CIA has concerns about this. It also has concerns about whether or not it might impact our neighbor, uh, Israel's neighbor and U.S. ally in Jordan, because they have a huge Palestinian population. Jordan's King Abdullah is one of the leading voices on this, saying don't do it. It will also embolden extremists in the Muslim Arab world. Jerusalem's not only important to Israelis and Palestinians, but also the third yeah, largest to and the most bullies. important city in the history of Islam for Muslims as well. So this has a lot of regional dynamics in, in addition to the Israeli-Palestinian dynamics here. Israelis and Palestinians have different reasons for wanting or not wanting this, but there is a lot of people in D.C. who have a lot of say on this as well, Sandra. Honor Powell, so outside of whatever geopolitics could be discussed, as far as the relocation in Jerusalem is concerned, or Israel versus Palestine and all that, is this not the very definition of bullying? Where you try to intimidate someone? If you move the capital to Jerusalem, if you move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, we will blow it up. And then everyone says Trump's the bad guy for considering that or for floating that notion out there it's like wait a second what happened here where we're just okay with the bullies where we're okay with the radical muslims now dictating what we do uh, I, I, i'm honestly at a loss here it, it makes no sense to me and regardless of whatever you think about this this notion to make jerusalem the capital and put the embassy there you know, I at least give Trump credit for at least trying to shake things up geopolitically. I mean, at least we have a foreign policy that, that is something to be there now. With Obama, there was no there. The foreign policy was just, yeah, just take a crap, take a dump all over America. Yeah, I don't care. At least with Trump, he's trying to move and shake things up. Now, what comes of it, we'll find out. But again, oh, don't go there. The radical terrorists are going to be bad. So Trump's the bad guy. Trump is emboldening the people. Trump is making them violent. It's like, no, they've been violent for, for thousands of years. How is it Trump's fault? I mean, we've told you the political left has aligned itself with violence, extremism, Islam, fake news. I mean, you know, <laughs> when I came on today, I thought I had more of a clear grasp on reality. And then once you got, go back into it and you try to, like, hash it all out, like, and you just, it's just, it, none of it makes any sense. I mean, it's just, these people are so mentally deranged. I'm just going to quit even trying to think about it because I'm starting to get deranged, I think, just trying to figure out w what these people are talking about. Um, hey, guys, can you pull up my caller list real quick? I want to go back to the phones here. Let's go to Alyssa calling in from Oregon. Alyssa, before I completely go crazy trying to figure out what the liberals are doing, uh, what's on your mind today? Hey, Owen. Uh, I just wanted to say you have, you're doing a really good job with, with the show. Um, anyway, I had two points. The first point is, um, this is actually more of a question. Did you guys hear at all anything about what happened with uh, Julian Assange? I, he apparently was going to cut some sort of deal with Trump um, regarding information about, you know, this whole Russia thing. And I haven't heard anything about it. It's just been several months and. It seems to be anything. mostly it, it seems to be mostly rumors. I haven't heard of anything that would make me want to report on it as fact. I think it's kind of a nice pipe dream, perhaps. Or if that is going to happen, it's not something that the Trump team would want publicized, uh, considering how they're also trying to character assassinate Assange right now as a Russian agent. Yeah, that's true. Um, and my second question, uh, I know Alex has kind of discussed this before about how, you know, uh, he has questioned, you know, probably not having Trump back on his show again. But I think it, it would be a really smart idea for him to have Trump back on. Uh, you know, well, I mean, let me just address that real quick. <clears throat> President Trump's media outreach since he was inaugurated has been or his media communication. I mean, whatever you want to say, it's been totally different than when he was campaigning. 
Uh, talk radio, pretty much Trump doesn't touch it anymore. In fact, the only real exclusives that he's been giving lately have been to Fox News and Fox Business hosts. Of course, you know, the ABCs, the NBCs, the CBSs will get their moments um, with Trump naturally. As far as President Trump coming back on the show for with Alex, again, he just President Trump has abandoned talk radio. He doesn't go on any talk radio anymore. So I don't know. And and, and Alex doesn't want to put him in a compromising position. So I, if, I, I understand if that, Trump, buddy. If Trump is going to go back on the talk radio um, campaign, essentially, for lack of a better term, it's going to have to be after he has some sort of monstrous victory. So I wouldn't expect to see Trump back on any talk radio until just a hugely massive that will just destroy all of the polarization victory happens. Like an arrest of a Hillary Clinton or, you know, a Comey perjury, something like that. It had to be something massive. Anything else? Uh, no, uh, that, that was pretty much it. I just think that if he were to have Trump on, it would be like a massive, you know, middle finger, if you will, at the globalists. And well, also, here's the you thing. Know- you got to understand. President Trump obviously has a team of people that are... Controlling him, if you will, or controlling the the inflow as well as the output of information and who gets access to President Trump. So who knows? I mean, obviously, Trump will do whatever he wants, but I I do think he takes into consideration all the advice he's getting. And I, I would imagine that people are advising him to stay as far away from talk radio and any host that they are viewing as unpredictable um, or, you know real, if you will. It's not going to be a controlled interview uh, like an Alex Jones. So I I don't know. It'd be nice, but I'm not really holding my breath on it. And it wouldn't really make much of a difference to me personally as far as how much I trust Trump. But I do think you're right about as far as it controlling the media. If, If President Trump came on with Alex Jones, that would be the biggest story for a week. Thank you so much for the call, Alyssa. Let's go to Becky, who just visited Israel and obviously heard me talking about Trump wanting to move the capital and the embassy to Jerusalem. Becky from Illinois, what are your thoughts? Um, I'm not sure if you can hear me. I can Um, hear you. Go ahead. Okay, great. Um, Yeah, we just took a tour to Israel, and my husband was apprehensive because he thought it would be insecure, very secure. My thought on the Palestinians, we did visit uh, the West Bank in Jericho and Bethlehem only. Um, And in all honesty, their leadership is keeping those people living in the ghetto. They're just sitting in limbo with no country and no way to access anything. So, now who, who are you saying this now? The Palestinians? The, the Palestinians that live in the West Bank of Jericho and Bethlehem for sure, their leadership doesn't help them. So Israel is not allowed to help them, and their leadership doesn't help them. So they're kind of sitting in a hole. So I feel sorry for them, but I really don't want their leadership to have any more money. What impact, though, would moving the embassy and the capital to Jerusalem have? I don't know that it would have anything except make their leadership furious. The people in Jerusalem on all sides, the Armenians, the Palestinians, the Jewish people, they get along. They have to live together. They have to work together. They get along. So it's kind of a weird little twist that all the news media says. And when you meet them. They don't have that animosity. Their biggest problem is their leadership. Interesting. Thank you for the call, Becky from Illinois. She was just in Israel uh, explaining to us what she saw. Let's go to Stephen, who's also calling in from Illinois. Go ahead, Stephen. Hello. Hey. Hi, this is Jaden, actually, not Stephen. <laughs> oh, okay, Jaden, go ahead. Hi. Uh, first off, I have to say I'm a really, really big fan of the show. I watch it every day. Um, I've tried a couple of your products. Uh, you know, I don't know. I just, I really don't know what to say. I get nervous when I'm on air. But what products have you tried? Uh, uh, I tried uh, the fluoride-free toothpaste before, and you know, there's a big difference when it comes to like crest and 
and stuff you buy at the store, it's just, it, you can just tell when you use it. And there's just a big difference in my mouth. I don't know. <laughs> well, thank you so much for supporting us. So what was on your mind today that made you want to call in? Um, I've always wanted to call in. I just never really know what to say because, like, I get all fed up and jumbled up. But I guess uh, what I really have to say is I think that if you had, like the last caller said, uh, she said that, or the caller before the last caller, she said that if you had Trump on the show, then that would basically be like a middle finger to the globalist. And I really just, I don't know, like, yeah, I'm not very <laughs> in depth. All right. Well, thank you for the call. Yeah. Again, though, it's not, I mean, you want to talk about a middle finger to the globalist. He got us out of the Paris Climate Accord. He he ended TPP. He's trying to strengthen the border. Uh, he's trying to cut taxes. I mean, so so I mean, that's you know, Trump is doing the middle finger to the globalists by actually trying to return American sovereignty, American independence and American prosperity. I understand the point that people are making, but you have to understand this is clearly. Whoever is running Trump's I don't know if this is Hope Hicks or, or Stephen Miller or General Kelly or whoever it is that's in charge of deciding the information inflow and output and who gets access to President Trump, they're obviously advising him or, or strictly even cutting off anything to talk radio at all. Now, Steve Bannon gets out of the White House. All of a sudden, he's doing talk radio. Mike Pence is the only member from the White House that I ever hear on talk radio, and that's like twice, I think. So it's just talk radio is a medium they have pretty much abandoned since Trump became president because you can't control talk radio. I mean, that, let's just call it what it is. So they don't want Trump in that environment. When you try to make sense of all of the news, it can be very, very frustrating. Even for somebody like myself that just lives and breathes it, breathes it like a fiend. But I, I, I continue to go back to my gut instinct, which is the louder they scream against Trump, the more noise they make, about Trump bad, Trump Russia, Trump this, Trump that, the more skeletons they have in their closet. And it continues to get proven time and time again. And so I'm going to just name a couple, couple, couple things I see coming down the pipe. So Michael Ian Black is, well, he's an actor, and he's been anti-Trump on his social media forever, as long as I can tell, constantly anti-Trump this, anti-Trump that. Well, turns out... Some of the trolls out there have been scrubbing through Michael Ian Black's Twitter account only to find that he tweets out, I guess what we can only hope is a joke, tweets about him molesting children. Hmm. So is that funny to Michael Ian Black to joke about molesting young children and babies? Or is there something else there? So that's Michael Ian Black, anti-Trumper extraordinaire, screaming from the top of his lungs every day how bad Trump is, Trump this, Trump that. Tweets about molesting children. Now, I don't know if you're going to find any of those on his main page right now. I know that Mike Cernovich has been um, has been finding and and retweeting some of those if you want to pull out the exact quote. So there's Michael Ian Black. So I wasn't surprised one bit knowing Michael Ian Black is a supreme liberal anti-Trumper from Hollywood to find out that he tweets what we can only hope are jokes about molesting children. Just like Seth Rogen. Anti-Trump all day, then has underaged women accuse him of sexual assault. Now you've got Crazy Joe. I don't actually, you know, we don't have the clip, but that's okay. Crazy Joe says, Trump and his team are going to jail for life. Of course, that is on the heels of Trump saying we need to investigate the dead intern that showed up in Crazy Joe's office. Huh. So you know what that means to me? It's Crazy Joe that's probably going to go to jail for life, folks. I'm telling you, 
It's just how it goes. So when you hear Crazy Joe going on MSNBC saying Trump and his team are going to jail for life, you know that that is the exact thought that crossed Joe Scarborough's mind about himself. That's how this is working. That's the trend. That's how it's going to go. In fact, let's go to Joe Scarborough saying that Trump's team will be in jail for the rest of their life. The campaign, Trump didn't think he was going to win, right. even on election day. Right. But Wrong. it was all about lying. It was all about making Lie again. Contacts. See, this he is just, just pause it. I just, but I think the most remarkable thing. So first, Crazy Joe says Trump didn't even believe he would win. What? Trump literally campaigned with, we're going to win so much, you're going to get sick of it. Okay, so Crazy Joe thinks you're that stupid. Then, I mean, I just, it's like, I, I don't even know what to do with these people. Rewind it again. Well, well, play, play Crazy Joe one more time before we get Roger Stone on here. The campaign, Trump didn't think he was going to win, right. even on election day. Right. But it was all about money. It was all about making contacts. We've said this before. Money. But I think the most remarkable thing about it is that even now that he's president, it's still all about money. Like, he's not sitting there thinking what Barack Obama or George W. Bush or Bill Clinton or Ronald Reagan thought. Like, what is my legacy going to be? He's thinking every day, how can I leverage this so well, I get, when I get out of the White House, all right, I just can make pull it even down. more money. And of course, no, you know, there's Joe and Mika. Mika's just like a set piece up there as usual. All about money? Uh, crazy Joe, uh, newsflash, Trump's businesses have been losing money and he donates his salary to charity. I mean, how big of a, Roger, Crazy Joe has lost it completely. I, I think that he's, he's afraid that perhaps an investigation into that dead intern might turn up some skeletons in his closet. Why else would Crazy Joe be acting like such a lunatic? Uh, because he's like a lover spurned. Look, there was a time when Joe Scarborough was sucking up to Donald Trump like there was no tomorrow. Uh, playing golf at his golf courses, visiting Mar-a-Lago. Uh, uh, Mika was once very, uh, very, very influential. It was Mika who recommended Dina Habib Powell, the CFR globalist Bush Quisling, who's the number two person under H.R. McMaster. You wonder, how could such a person work in a Trump White House? But uh, we learned that Mika recommended her, her for the job. Uh, but the real thing here is that Joe is very bitter. Joe, in his entire congressional career, dreamed of being president, said he told his young Confederates he would ultimately run for president. Uh, and then Donald Trump comes along, his friend, becomes elected president. Uh, and then, believe it or not, Joe thinks that he should be selected for vice president. Yes, over Mike Pence, over Chris Christie, over all the other potential candidates. And then he's embittered when he's not. Uh, and he's act childish since then. Uh, and this is just the continuation of a spat. I mean, uh, Joe is, uh, you know, uh, Joe is an acquired taste, to say the least. You're telling me that Crazy Joe is that unhinged and delusional? He really thought he should be vice president? This is all about jealousy. Uh, he very seriously thought Trump should pick him for vice president because he's Joe Scarborough. I mean, he has, you know. Who? Has, Nobody knows who that is. Nobody knows who Joe Scarborough is. Well, not in Joe's mind, in any event. Uh, <laughs> so, But uh, these kind of brainless attacks. Look, you're going to see... Uh, this uh, uh, fall apart quickly because I really believe the president's lawyers are not serving him well. They they have a much too laid back, they're much too trusting of the special counsel. This fellow, Ty Cobb, who evidently stole his name from some baseball player, uh, has a theory that if you just give everything you have, all your records and all your books and all the testimony they want, uh, that the uh, that the innate fairness and the decency of Robert Mueller will uh, will lead him to conclude that no laws have been broken. It's a completely naive view that misunderstands the partisan enmity for Donald Trump, the hatred, the burning hatred of the political establishment, uh, and what is very clearly going to be a two-staged effort to try to undo what they couldn't do at the ballot box. 
they seek nothing more than the than the removal of Donald Trump because he threatens their cozy little stranglehold on power. Those who were bred to lead the country, the Yaleys and the Harvard graduates, how have they been doing for the last 30 years? Things going great? Lots of jobs? No, they've given us illegal wars. They have eroded our civil liberties. Uh, they have plunged us into debt. Uh, they have uh, frittered away our advantages in trade deals. Uh, now and they tell us that Trump is an idiot and that they should run the country. It's unbelievable. And I have a question for Roger on the other side. You're not going to want to miss it. This is The War Room. Welcome back. You're on The War Room with your hosts, Roger Stone and Owen Schroyer. Something incredible happened today. I was working the phones very hard, working my sources in the Trump administration and in the Fifth Estate, the media, and creating information and preparing to break some big news on this show. Uh, and our internet went down literally minutes before we were to log on to the war room. Uh, and uh, we couldn't figure out what the problem was ours, but we learned that there was a, a power outage and this just this one block, this one block in the middle of New York City and in an undisclosed location went out. So the NSA boys are trying to do their job, but we're connecting to you by telephone uh, because I think the president's in grave danger. I really think these lawyers and his and his staff, the generals, are sleepwalking him to the gallows. There is no question whatsoever that Mueller, based on the fact that he's brought process-related charges against Flynn and Manafort and Gates and Papadopoulos, uh, is prepared to bring such a frivolous process charge against the president, such as uh, obstruction or uh, perjury. Stunning news today that that uh, that. Mueller has subpoenas Trump's financial records from Deutsche Bank. It is well known that he has been seeking closely held private financial documents from the president from any source possible, uh, as well as looking at bank records relating to real estate transactions 20 years ago. Where is the Russian collusion, you ask? Well, under this absence of a special counsel law, that we're operating, uh, he is c complete free reign. There's no governance. There's no over no oversight. Under the old law, a special prosecutor had to go to the attorney general to get written permission for the expansion of a probe into new areas, but not here. We're far afield. So uh, unfortunately, we saw a good man brought to his knees, General Flynn. Flynn threw in the towel when President Trump threw him over the side. Ten days ago, the mainstream media got it wrong. We at InfoWars got it right. It was Trump who broke with Flynn. Flynn did not break with Trump. Flynn did not go over the side and turn on his commander-in-chief. He was thrown to the wolves. Perhaps the president and his advisors believe the wolves will be happy with the carcass of Mr. Flynn, but I think there is little chance of that. The, the partisanship, uh, the many conflicts, uh, and the operational tactics show me that, that Mueller is committed to bringing some charge against the president. And then, of course, if the president sustains that, the plan B for the political establishment is a 25th Amendment play, a coup. That requires a majority of the cabinet plus the vice president. Breaking story today uh, by McKay Coppins uh, tells us that Pence was open to a draft by party leaders in the aftermath, the immediate aftermath of the NBC grab their you know what tape by Billy Bush. Uh, that jibes with a report earlier uh, that when candidate Trump called vice president candidate Pence right afterwards, Pence would not take his call sent him a note saying that he didn't want to talk to him at this time. He was still sorting out the issues. So uh, Pence might be enticed. This takes a majority of the cabinet. Now, the problem is there are a few Trump loyalists in the Trump cabinet. There's a lot of swamp creatures in there. Uh, I wouldn't expect Rex Tillerson, after he got thrown out, revealed first here on InfoWars, the first national news outlet, to report he would be gone by the end of the year. And, Owen, he will. So we're, we're in a situation uh, in which the, 
the establishment will ramp up these Trump is crazy stories. Uh, you've seen more and more and more of them talking about his erratic nature and so on. Uh, Corey Lewandowski did not help this with his book in which he depicts the president in a wild uh, light. Very harmful, I think, and feeding the mainstream media theme, uh, which they will get to a fevered pitch if that's necessary. So my theory here is Mueller is going to shoot. He may shoot and take down our president. He may shoot and miss. But if the president survives that, uh, he needs to wake up and smell the coffee. The political establishment is committed to the removal of a man who has record stock markets, unemployment at record low levels, booming housing market, real signs that America is back, but he threatens their power. Owen? Roger, my question for you is, how many people on Trump's team even realize the war they're in? Two of the names that I would suspect are aware of the war and the danger that Trump was in are Michael Flynn and Steve Bannon. Of course, both no longer in there having Trump's back all the time now. So I'm curious, who on Trump's team really still has the president's back? Or, or better yet, who on Trump's team in his cabinet, in his administration, are even aware of the war and the reality of the war that they're currently in? I think they have the president pretty tightly controlled in a cocoon. A close friend of the president who was with him several days ago, spent about two hours with him, told me it's like he's in a sealed bubble. They show him only the polls that are favorable. They show him no polls that are unfavorable. They don't show him any stories that would upset him. He was blissfully unaware of Jeff Sessions' obsession with outlawing marijuana in the 29 states where it's been legalized. Uh, he was uh, unaware uh, that the Obama NSA uh, illegally surveilled 30,000 Americans in an act of political espionage in violation of the Constitution and the law. Uh, it, it's amazing how the generals now have cut off all of his old friends and supporters. You notice that after he went to Palm Beach, where he had kind of run of the place and saw a lot of his old contacts and friends and supporters, Shortly thereafter, he posted the uh, incredible videos of the Islamists uh, beheading the Dutch man on crutches. He also got very feisty with Joe Scarborough. Could be that he heard about the dead intern over cocktails at mar lago So you think Trump just needs more room to breathe right now? Uh, well, I think that they have him, they're have they trying to lull him into a false sense of confidence. His lawyers have told him that he will have a lawyer from the, a letter from the special counsel clearing him shortly. Now they're saying by the end of the year. Well, it was by Thanksgiving. And then it was by Christmas. Now it's the end of the year. Mr. Cobb it, it has set unrealistic expectations in his client, to say the least. Uh, there will be no letter forthcoming. Uh very clearly, Mike Flynn is going to finger someone. He was instructed to do this by someone. We don't know who that is today. But uh, that's why I think there's another shoe to drop here. Roger, what do you make of what's come out about Peter Stroke? Not just his anti-Trump bias and the messages he's sending around, but the fact this guy's had his fingertips all over the Clinton email investigation, the Clinton interviews, the softening of James Comey's, you know, looking into potential perjury and charges against him. I mean, what do you make of Peter Stroke behind the scenes? Uh, he's typical of the young stormtroopers that they're using in this operation. What about the tactics of this fellow, Andrew Weissman? Uh, during the Enron investigation, he locked a 30-year-old executive in solitary confinement for two weeks to break him and make him say what he wanted him to say. That's extraordinary. And when a, a complaint went to the New York bar, it was just routinely dismissed, which shows that, there, that the justice system in this country is very flawed. Yeah, and this is the same Weissman that had Manafort's home raided. Well, sent I, them believe, in. I believe the fellow who was fired, uh, Stortz, I guess his name is, is the agent to whom Mike Flynn allegedly lied. It's amazing that this guy... 
But but see, Flynn gets the charges for lying, but Clinton still gets to walk, even though it was the same guy doing the interview. Talk about a double standard. Last segment with Roger Stone on the other side. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You're at the War Room with your hosts, Roger Stone and Owen Schroyer, and we're laying out the incredible threat facing our president as the establishment tries to gather up all their power and their <clears throat> acts and their resources to re- do something that they couldn't do at the ballot box, remove Donald Trump. And uh, as I was just telling Owen, I think there is a plan A that's an attack by Mueller uh, and uh, results in impeachment. Uh, plan B, a 25th Amendment play. And if that fails, there's a new problem on the horizon. It is widely thought that Utah U.S. Senator Orrin Hatch, who recently came out for the legalization of cannabis, marijuana, and a good man, one of the soldiers of the Reagan Revolution, will retire. Uh, And sources very high up in the Church of Latter-day Saints tell me that Mitt Romney will be a candidate for that seat. Now, why, you would ask, would someone at his age and a former governor want to stoop to being a U.S. senator. Well, I am told he will spend no time in the Senate. He will immediately launch a challenge from the Senate against President Trump within the Republican primaries and caucuses. Romney regrets not running in 2016 because he believed shrewdly that Jeb Bush could not be stopped. Uh, He has always resented Trump's getting the prize that eluded him, Uh, So much so that Trump was able to play rope-a-dope with him over the Secretary of State's office. Uh, But now the president has undertaken a charm offensive to convince Orrin Hatch that he must serve one more term. That would, of course, thwart the Romney-Trump takedown plan. The first place you're going to hear any of this is InfoWars. Oh, you'll read that Mitt Romney's thinking of running for the Senate, and you'll read that Orrin Hatch is being uh, importuned by the president to run again, but you won't hear the backstory, which is this is the nascent Romney presidential bid to topple Donald Trump if he is still standing after the onslaught of the establishment in the form of Prosecutor Mueller uh, and treachery, perhaps, in his own cabinet. Owen? Well, it's just funny to me that failed politicians like Jeff Flake and Mitt Romney in their hubris think that they still have any political, uh, you know, leverage or any sort of, you know, public ability to sway public opinion. You've got Mitt Romney who says no majority is worth losing our honor, our integrity. And then you've got Jeff Flake. This one just came out. I don't know if you've heard this, Roger. Jeff Flake just donated $100 to Doug Jones for U.S. Senate and tweeted out country over party. So Mitt Romney and Jeff Flake, I mean, just total failures. That's hardly an act of courage. Mr. Flake has already announced his retirement. Uh, Trump is right. He left the race because he would have been beaten in the Republican primary. If Donald Trump had uh, endorsed John McCain's opponent uh, in the primary in 2016, John McCain would not be a thorn in his side. Kelly Ward, then in the state Senate, challenged McCain and ran a very credible race against him with no resources. A Trump endorsement would have put her over the top, but uh, unfortunately, the candidate Trump was talked out of it by his campaign advisors, including Paul Manafort, uh, Jared Kushner, uh, and others. So that, I thought, was an egregious mistake. They let the weasel live. They could have ended his checkered career. He's getting increasingly zany, angry, bitter, melting down in public, red-faced tirades, screaming at people. Uh, People had enough of his abuse. I thought the way he treated that Fox reporter uh, uh, was disgraceful very recently. Well, it's just amazing because I I figure – and I've been saying this, the louder they scream against Trump, the more they try to rattle the cage against Trump, the more they're trying to hide. 
Well, the problem, of course, is that in the cocoon, you don't know what the president sees and hears. I think that he has uh, now as a comfort level with uh, his handlers. This is almost like Stockholm Syndrome. Uh, And Kelly and Mattis uh, and McMaster form a military triumvirate, and they believe it is their duty to have an orderly transition of power. The part of Al Haig is being played here by Henry Mc, or by H.R. McMaster. Uh, Haig understood his mission was to end the Trump, the, the Nixon presidency, uh, as cleanly as possible, and he walked the old man to the gallows, in essence, arranging all the terms of his resignation and surrender. Uh, and I don't believe the soldiers, uh, all of whom arised, rose career-wise during Obama. A very wise general named Jones, retired in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, told me uh, that uh, no general or major officer who had risen during the Obama years could be trusted because essentially they promoted the globalists and their and their minions. Conservative or Republican officers, or I should say officers who had more conservative personal viewpoints, um, were winnowed out and retired. Uh, so just because someone has stars on their chest, uh, we should not think there is no politics in the military. Uh, and the president, as much as he re- admires our fighting men and women, may not understand that he has an asp in the bosom. Yeah, and I would just stand to reason that really it's impossible to not inject your personal politics into any of this because – If you're a thinking individual, if you're a thinking man or woman, you're going to have politics. I mean, that's just natural, especially if you're in the military. You're going to have political beliefs. But, Roger, what does it tell you? Not just that Mitt Romney and Jeff Flake are anti-Trump. Okay, that's one thing. And then they want to go down and they want to be anti-Roy Moore and say, oh, Roy Moore is a bad guy. Look at these accusations, mind you, accusations. But I think it really shows who Romney and who Flake are. That not just do they want to not go with Roy Moore, which is fine. Okay, you want to go with not Roy Moore because you don't like these accusations. Okay, that's fine. But they're choosing to go with Doug Jones. Well, as you know, a write-in candidate uh, jumped into that race. I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to get him any votes whatsoever. But formerly, where did he work? He worked for General John Kelly in the Army. Kelly even left his fingerprint on that. But doesn't it tell you that for people like Romney and Flake, they're not loyal to their policies. Do they even really have any policies or are they totally controlled and now being told to go against Trump? Because if they were loyal to their policies, there's no way they would be supporting Doug Jones. You can't support a Doug Jones who supports abortion and open borders and everything else that comes along with being a good liberal. So they aren't even loyal to their policies. I mean, if anything, I'm looking at Jeff Flake and Romney today and saying you are more of a nothing, a shill, a shallow piece of dirt than I already thought you were. Uh, well, I could not, I could not uh, agree more. Look, we have to help hope that the president does the only thing he can do, which is very, very clear. I don't know which one of his lawyers or advisors told him it's inappropriate for him to talk to anyone at the Justice Department. That is false. He has the absolute authority to order the attorney general to appoint a special counsel. He could even name the person, in my opinion, Uh, The failure to do so would require a resignation from Jeff Sessions. This would be a direct order, just like Nixon's direct order uh, in the Saturday Night Massacre. Uh, And we cannot, uh, if the attorney general recuses himself or resigns because he wouldn't carry out the order, it would fall to the number two man, Rod Rosenstein. But since Rosenstein would be the subject of a Uranium One investigation, I would argue that he has to step aside meaning the decision would go to the Solicitor General. It is time to have a special prosecutor in Uranium One. It is time to proceed against Mr. Comey, Mr. Mueller, Mr. McCabe, Mr. Rosenstein. They knew there were crimes being committed. They let the deal go forward regardless. And then, of course, Bill and Hillary, the actual perps of the deal. Uh, that is the way the president can vanquish his enemies. He does not have to hire Mueller. Mueller could not survive while under federal investigation. It doesn't pass the smell test. Well, Uh, it's all there, and Roger Stone breaks it down for us on The War Room every day. Thanks for coming on with us again, Roger. We'll talk with you tomorrow. Thanks, and let me go talk to the NSA now about why we have no Skype. All right. Well, they're already listening, so you don't even need to turn an object on. They're already listening to you, Roger. And we'll get more from Roger tomorrow. 
And I'm going to get more into this deep state war going on with spies. All right, we've got loaded phone lines. I promise to clear them out by the end of the broadcast. But this is big breaking right now. Representative Matt Gates from Florida, a champion of a patriot, really showing himself to be truly a patriot lately, tweets out, Holding a press conference tomorrow alongside eight congressmen calling for investigation on FBI's special treatment of Hillary Clinton. <whistles> Joining him will be Jim Jordan, Mark Meadows, Rob DeSantis, Ted Yoho, Scott Perry, Andy Biggs, Louis Gohmert. I mean, these are some of the most, uh, I mean, it's hard. It's amazing, but... I mean, these are some of the biggest patriots in Congress now. And again, it's hard to, it used to be hard to know who the real patriots and who the frauds were, but it's, it's getting easier now because of the Trump test. So, wow, what will come of tomorrow's press conference with Matt Gates and eight other congressmen calling out the FBI for their special treatment of Hillary Clinton? So with that, let's go to Tom Fitton from Judicial Watch who was on Tucker Carlson last night, a couple other patriots that are able to break through the controlled, the control of the news on television, talking about the investigation into Hillary Clinton needing to be reopened. So she and the Attorney General Holder, who preceded her, are both obviously political and hacks, I think. But you would think that the agents who serve underneath him in the FBI would be non-political and be really worried about basic, basic ethical questions like this one. But you don't see that they were. Uh, well, th th this was a leadership. I mean, we're getting the top-level uh, right. emails. So as, as Joe uh, mentioned earlier, the leadership of the FBI was ruined by uh, James Comey and the, and the politics of trying to protect Hillary Clinton. The Justice Department Department and the FBI uh, became arms of the Clinton campaign last year. And frankly, it continued into the Trump administration, as we saw with the ambush interview of General Flynn. I, I think there is a significant crisis, not only at the FBI, but at the Justice Department. We had this other FBI agent involved in the Clinton email investigation also involved in the Russia investigation, a key decision maker, decision maker in both investigations. Both investigations, in my view, have been irredeemably compromised. The Clinton investigation needs to be reopened, and the Mueller investigation yeah. needs to be shut down until we figure out how badly it's been politicized in the least. And it's Where is Jeff Sessions? Earth to Jeff Sessions! Earth to Jeff Sessions! America to Jeff Sessions. Where is Jeff Sessions? Now here's Congressman Chaffetz on Fox. Now, again, it's just the, the double standard. How Hillary Clinton is able to skate really begs a, a litany of questions. Come on, there's direct evidence well, What did Comey that say to that? How did, he ex know. how did he justify the FBI's conclusion that she didn't? He doesn't. He doesn't. And what makes no sense with Cheryl Mills, not only is she a witness, not only does she have to get an immunity deal, but she's also Hillary yeah. Clinton's attorney. Stroke and she's also interviewed Cheryl Mills. So the, the American person you know, sitting at home, why do they care about Cheryl Mills and this you know, possible deception and so on? Here, pause it right here. Just pause it real quick because this is key too. Peter Stroke interviewed Cheryl Mills, another Clinton operative, another cover-up of justice. And who is that blonde lady? Is it who is this blonde lady on Fox News? Anyone recognize this woman? I don't, I don't recognize her. Here, let's finish the clip. This has a little different blindfold in place when it deals with the Clintons. We issued a subpoena on September 15th of this year. And these the documents on that were on Reddit were destroyed four days later. I want the FBI to go in and look at that. I want Hillary Clinton, if this was just a mistake, why is it that everybody's pleading the fifth and having to get immunity deals? I want Hillary Clinton to look in the camera and tell people oh. there's immunity, they're not going to prosecute. Tell Congress and tell the American people the truth. Right now, we can't get to that truth. Hmm. So maybe it's that. Maybe that's why... Chaffetz decided to end his political career and now try to move into politics. My guess is Fox News hires him before the end of next year because he didn't want to die because he's calling out the Clinton crime family. I don't know. Just a hunch. Just a hunch. All right. News continues to develop as we're here on air. Let me just knock a couple of these stories out here and then I'm going to take your calls. This comes out of the Daily Caller. I mean, literally just came out. 
John Conyers' son and appointed successor. My, uh, I'm paraphrasing here, folks. I can't say, I don't want to say the real world. My homies deal drugs. My dad is a effing player. This is John Conyers' son, who John Conyers appointed as his successor today upon his retirement, if you will, more like forced out because he's a sexual deviant. But here's the irony of this. So first you have, okay, so Conyers, all these accusations and everything, okay, it comes down the pipe. Then you have the new accuser. Conyers was running his hand up my leg under my skirt during church. So then Conyers says, all right, I've got to retire. But I'm such an arrogant pig, and I'm so disgraceful, and I have no class at all. John Conyers. Hi, I'm Representative John Conyers. I am classless and a disgraceful pig. And I am a sexual deviant that's now been exposed. But I still have such arrogance and hubris that I'm going to appoint my son to replace me because that's how I roll. I'm John Conyers, an arrogant pig. Oh, but what happens? It then is discovered that the ve- I mean, see, this is what I'm saying. This is how dumb these people are. Like, you didn't even think? Conyers' son goes on social media, puts out expletives, goes on. He apparently tried to be a rapper. But if you thought... If you thought that all of these accusations against Conyers were fake, boy, his son just threw him under the bus. Saying his dad is an effing player? Where's the one tweet here? He tweets out, my dad is, he, first of all, he tweet, apparently he tweets out nonstop about how his dad is a pimp player. But one specific tweet, he says, my dad is an effing player and reckless He just got this dude's wife super (laughs) low-key. Okay. Well, (laughs) I just, I don't even, I just, I got to move on from that. That's just, that's just, you know, you just leave that right there. So John McCain, I mean, again, these, this is the pathetic state of these congressmen. Conyers, Franken, McCain, literal swine, literal swine human swine that just roll around in filth all day. John McCain, so desperate, such a piece of trash, tweets out, by the way, what happened to John McCain's cancer to the brain? Is it gone? Is it getting worse? Is it receding? Is he undergoing treatment? Was it even a real story to begin with? What happened to to John McCain's brain cancer? It's funny how that story just cropped up when he was getting attacked by Trump, and now just disappears. Magically, it's a woozy, it's a wazzy. Brain ca- what brain cancer? John McCain, what? Brain cancer, I've never heard of it. John McCain tweets out, begging for followers on Twitter to reach 3 million, and then what happens? Everybody quits following him. Where is John McCain at on Twitter right now, guys? Pull it up again for me, please. What is the exact number... If you just put the mouse over the 299, John McCain has now lost 6,000 people since tweeting it. So he asked for 74 more followers, instead lost 6,000. <laughs> oh, woo! John Conyers appoints his son to succeed him. His son tells you that John Conyers is a sexual deviant that... that cheats on his wife, and that is involved in extramarital affairs with other women. Oh, and by the way, John Conyers' wife, I don't know how, how she's, she's more than 20 years younger than Conyers, spent, and she had to go to jail for three years. So Conyers' wife spent three years in jail for bribery. Then you had Conyers using funds to buy a Cadillac Escalade illegally, which his son then had to pay for. I mean, folks, we've been telling you these people are so corrupt. Like, oh, man, it's just it's just nuts. I just got, I, I can't even I can't even fathom this. Let's go to the phone lines. Let's go to Marcus in Fort Worth, Texas. Go ahead, Marcus. Good God, Owen! Today has been wild. It's every day is wild, my I, man. I mean, 
How how do you sitting here watching as you've been kind of laying all this stuff out? Let's just go back to the first hour real quick. You got Crazy Joe Scarborough smoking pine cones. Okay, Crazy yep. Joe Crazy Joe pine cones. Um, I'm gonna call that Fort Collins syndrome. Hillary's got it too. That's why she's coughing up the globules. <laughs> oh, um, I love this guy. He listens to the show. He knows the inside jokes. Okay, go ahead. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. We got. I mean. It's, they're teaching us. They're teaching us how to be cow cucks. That's what Israel is. I mean, we can't. We can't move our embassy. We can't. We're not even allowed to do that. Yeah. Don't. Um, why? Hey. Why are you being so violent? Why are you being so violent, wanting to move the embassy right. to Jerusalem? Uh, don't you I'm know so if you sorry. move the? Don't you know? Hey. Don't you hey. know if you move the embassy to Jerusalem that the peaceful Muslims are going to chop your head off? Why are you being so violent? <laughs> throw me off a roof. Just throw me off a roof right now. Yeah, I'm you right. should be thrown off a roof, I and then I'm going to retweet left. the video, and then I'm the bad guy. Yeah, I mean, it's like it, that's it's that's exactly what red, red pill black's going through in, in, a, in a whole other format. And then you've got, um, like you said, okay, the, the, I'm I'm upset with I'm upset with the info warriors, some of the info warriors, because, and I know it's hard to get because these issues, like you say, they're very deep, they're very complex, and. Sometimes it's like the, the whole middle finger to Trump thing. It's like, like you said before, Trump is literally, I mean, he's rampaging, rampaging the globalists right now. He's, he's like a, like a, what'd you say? He's a lion with his chest out smirking as he gets blasted by arrows and they're, they're bending as they hit him. And yeah, like, that's why they're so ticked off. In half. Yeah. So that's, that's more than a middle finger. He's stomping on their throats politically. And then. Joy Behar, oh my gosh, Joy Behar. Her and Crazy Joe on one show, sitting in front of a camera, would be a, would be a freak show that people would people would actually tune back into the mainstream situation if they had Crazy Joe Scarborough and Joy Behar in one room just going bananas. Oh, no, it's actually hilarious because see, this is what I'm saying though. You can I don't know what I'm such a weird guy. I like look for like the like when I watch Joe and Mika on the air. I'm telling you, you can tell so much about Crazy Joe the way he treats Mika Brzezinski, his wife. She's like a tool for him. Literally, no, no, no literally. I, I say people don't understand. If you watch, if you watch Morning Joe every day, Mika doesn't even talk. She just it's sits like, there. She's like a stage prop for Joe. She is literally a stage prop. For Crazy Joe. Marcus, thank you for the call so much. You're, you're just right on the money with everything. It's like, how do I even, I don't even cover chemtrails. I don't, it's like, there's all this crazy stuff. How do you even cover all of it, folks? But look, we try to do all of it. That's why we're live 10 hours a day. That's why we're continuing to expand. And it's all possible with your support at InfoWarsStore.com. We're running specials right now. 33% off the groundbreaking product, DNA Force. 33% off that. And it is an incredible product, folks. I take it every day. Vitamin Mineral Fusion is 50% off right now. Take advantage of that special. 50% off Super Blue fluoride-free products. That's the toothpaste and the mouthwash at InfoWarsStore.com. Get to InfoWarsStore.com. Check out our entire store. All kinds of great products at the store right now. T-shirts, hats. And, you know, I was just thinking about this. Because I, because we had a caller mention, you know, wearing the T-shirts out, and how you can meet people, and and it kind of hit home to me hearing him say that, folks, we are literally in a war for this country. Okay, that's not rhetoric. That's what's happening. When you wake up every morning, and you put on that shirt from Infowarsstore.com, that is your act of aggression against the enemy. That is your act of war against the enemy. It's not violent. It's your right to free speech right in their face. Show that you're not a coward. I know We know that the liberals are crazy and they want to probably, you know, stab you, run you over with a car, whatever, because you like Infowars. But this is our act of war in their face. Sometimes I imagine everybody has this issue if you're uh, in media or a broadcaster. A subject or a news story will be so toxic that you just don't even want to touch it because there's so many opportunities for just to say the wrong thing or to have something misconstrued. Uh, but we just go right into these things at InfoWars. We don't shy away. We don't back down. We just go full on. 
And this is one of those stories for me. Because you don't want to say the wrong thing here, but it just begs so many questions. So I was not aware of this about Don Lemon, but apparently this was a well-known thing that Don Lemon was a victim of sex abuse as a kid. So he's using that to give himself the high ground in this Roy Moore discussion. Uh, but first, let's go to the actual clip before I respond to this and break down the lies and propaganda within. But I just wanted to give you that backdrop. Don Lemon claims that he is a victim of childhood sexual assault. I mean, that's to me, that's rape. I mean, that's that's molestation. That's that's pedophilia. Um, but but. Not to get into that. Here's the clip of Don Lemon using that as leverage to give his opinion more clout, talking about Roy Moore. Discussing what's happening down in Alabama. Um, so, Ed, we're not supposed to believe any of those people. <laughs> we're no, supposed to I, believe. I have, <laughs> and pause it right there, though. And this is, this is, just think about this, though, as he's saying this. He's saying, we're not supposed to believe any of the Roy Moore accusers, even though no one's saying that. We're just saying innocent till proven guilty. Uh, you know, an allegation, an accusation does not equal guilt. Uh, but to Don Lemon, it does. But again, remember, they ignored for decades every single Bill Clinton accuser. Every single one, guys. Every single one for 20 years, liberal media ignored. But as soon as it's uh, anyone else but Clinton, they report it. Go back. I've said there's a difference over and over again, Don, on your show and everywhere else on CNN, that if uh, somebody admits to it, like Al Frank had admitted to it, Conyers admitted to it, the FBI agent has now admitted to misconduct, then there ought to be a standard. But if someone denies it, whether it's Donald Trump or Roy Moore, we shouldn't. I'm not saying Roy Moore should be only believed, but five or six yeah, weeks before an election, Don, that's you what you're saying. saying. No, you the access Hollywood, the access no. Hollywood tape was a couple weeks before the election. The president right. admitted to it and apologized. Apologize for it. What, right. So well, then you're what's the difference? Well, it I, pause true. it. Pause it. Do I really have to explain that to Don Lemon? I, I'm honestly asking. I mean, is Don Lemon retarded because you don't know the difference between a, a tape and someone actually assaulting someone? I mean, seriously, that's what I'm not. I'm not trying to be insistent here. I mean, let's ask the real questions here. Is Don Lemon such a dolt that he really doesn't understand the difference between someone actually sexually assaulting someone, perhaps a minor, and someone just making a joke about how women treat you when you're rich. So this is how foolish, I, I, honestly, Don Lemon's IQ, five, six on a good day, seven if he takes his brain force. Don Lemon says, what's the difference between Trump's tape and people admitting to sexual assault. That's how dumb Don Lemon is and how dumb they think their audience is. Honestly, replay it. Can you rewind it? I can't even, I can't even stress this enough, folks. Everything that is fake news is explained right in this two-second clip where Don Lemon seriously is suggesting that there's no difference between Trump's tape and what John Conyers actually did. Go back to the clip. Roy Moore should be only believed, but five or six yeah, weeks before an election, Don. That's yeah, what you're saying. saying. No, no it's not. Access Hollywood, the no. Access Hollywood tape was a couple weeks before the election. The president right. admitted to it and apologized for it. What, right. So well, then you're, what's the difference? Well, it I, was true. It turned what's out the difference? To be, he, he admitted it to it. He admitted to it. He admitted but it turned out to things. be true. He had no, it was on tape. He, he couldn't. The reason I'm asking you, here's why this upsets me, okay? Now, now pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it. Now, this is what happened. So Don Lemon's argument just failed. Don Lemon just realized that his argument just hit rock bottom, and he's got nothing. He just realized how stupid he is. He's like, oh, crap. Uh, Trump admitting that he may have said this on tape is obviously different than someone actually sexually assaulting someone. Oh, crap. I just looked like a complete idiot. So look at what he does to distract from his idiotic statement. No uh -huh. secret to, except for new people who are watching, that I was a victim of childhood sexual abuse. Pause and it. What a convenient play for Don Lemon right then, right there. 
Now go back. And it is tough. Who? No one, Ed. No one, no matter how old you are, wants to come out and admit that publicly. It is just not something that is done, especially when you're talking about something that happens at that right. young an age. And that's, that is what's so upsetting to so many people. And here you are, sitting here on CNN, twisting yourself into a pretzel to try no. to defend pause something. Pause it, pause is it, pause it. This is hilarious. They're all attacking Ed Martin. He can't even get a word in edgewise because Don Lemon is 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 virtue signaling him into the dustpan. And then he's like, Don Lemon is like, Ed, why are you twisting and, and contorting all your words? And Ed Martin is sitting over there like, dude, you won't even let me talk. He's bellowing. Don Lemon is bellowing over his host. But again, Don, I'm not trying to be insensitive here, bro. I mean, this could explain a lot about you even. Were you really sexually assaulted as a kid? I mean, really, were you victimized by a pedophile? I mean, let's get, I mean, whoa, Don, let's not just skip over this. I mean, let's name names. I mean, let's. So this is a serious accusation that you just made, Don. Who did it to you? Who sexually assaulted you when you were a kid, Don Lemon? If you're going to use that argument as a way to gain clout in a political debate, I think you need to, you know, maybe provide some evidence or something like that. I don't know. This is just my opinion. Maybe he was a victim, and that's terrible. But, you know, here he is using that as leverage in a political debate. I mean, is that fair? But here he is accusing Ed Martin of twisting his words around, even though that's literally what Don Lemon just did. Go back to it. Indefensible. Not one person well, wants to come out second. and say that. Not two, not three, not four, not wait five. Certainly not 12 the women. To these women? They get hate mail. Wait a they're, second, They're not Don. getting any financial wait, benefits or anything out of this either. <laughs> I mean, you know. Don, I mean, please, Don, if you're going to say that to me on national television, at least give me a chance to say something back. I mean, I, I have never said that we shouldn't when someone alleges, especially He's childhood bellowing. abuse. And there's one of the claims that it's a 14-year-old. I have never said we shouldn't honor that and investigate it. Should be done, but what I've said is when the litany of things rolled out, a lot of them by non-minors. The question is, who do you believe? I don't disbelieve the the, the, the women. <laughs> oh I'm just God. saying that. Now the look at their reaction. Alabama get to vote on who they want, and we'll see. Hey, what see, that's it. That's okay. everything right there. The yeah. Liberals, really liberals outrageous. think yeah. they really they believe they have the moral high ground. They really believe that they have the exclusive access to the real information and the moral high ground information. And they're above you. They're beyond reproach. And so there's, there they are trying to back Ed Martin and bully him into a corner to disavow Roy Moore. And he's like, nope. And then all the hosts are like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Why won't he just back down to our bullying? Oh, my God. Don Lemon said he was a victim. President Trump has just announced a rally for Friday in Pensacola. We'll keep you updated on that. I just talked about Don Lemon claiming he was a victim of childhood sex abuse. You know what? I didn't want to be an insensitive jack leg and doubt Don Lemon on those claims because those are serious claims and you don't want to be rude and insensitive about something like that. But then I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, you know what? Why would I trust Don Lemon? So I'll go ahead and trigger all of the fake newsers at Snopes and Mashable and BuzzFeed who look and obsess over everything we do and say every day to look for something to try to meme us on. You can go ahead and meme me on that. Was Don Lemon actually a childhood victim of sexual assault? I don't know. I don't, I, I've never heard him say anything else honest on air before. Why would I trust that? So maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. Is it then appropriate to use that as leverage during a political debate? I have a feeling that this thing isn't going to go quietly. I have a strange, irking feeling that this is just going to linger. These things tend to linger, folks. And let's see how Don Lemon addresses this in the future, because I guarantee you there hasn't been as much press on Don Lemon claiming he was a victim of sexual abuse as a child, as there will be now. In fact, I won't even let this thing go away, because I'd like for, you know what, Don Lemon? I, in fact, here's what I'll say. If it is true, Don Lemon, I'm totally in your court, and let's arrest whoever was responsible for this. How about that? But if it's true and Don Lemon still made it to CNN, more power to him, I suppose. All right, let's go to these callers. We got a line of callers here. Let's go to Will 
calling in from Boston, Massachusetts, wants to talk about Israel and Jerusalem. Go ahead, Will. Hey, Owen, can you hear me? Yep. Um, yeah, I was just, for your conversation earlier, was, uh, I thought that was a pretty, um, a pretty relevant point as far as things happening in the world and, and future events that will likely unfold. I think um, just calling that out uh, is definitely central. And I also just wanted to encourage you to keep on uh, fighting the, the war in, in, in the way that you're doing it. Um, but I just think people need to really uh, take into account that there's definitely a spiritual uh, significant uh, thing happening here. And it's not just, um, you know, the, you can't, it's, it's easy to harp on the polls uh, and, like, the trendies and everything. But you've got to stay, like, stay focused on the uh, spiritual things that are happening in the world. Well, and we are and we are being victorious, especially spiritually and culturally. And now politically is kind of what we're waiting to see the results on. But, you know, you just kind of kicked the can of thought in my mind, if you will. It's almost as if Trump making this move or, or proposing this notion to move the capital to Jerusalem and to move the embassy to Jerusalem. It's almost the perfect troll. I didn't even realize it until you kind of kicked that thought can in my mind. It really is the perfect troll because now he's put a situation in which he's forcing the liberals to side with radical Islam. And then he's basically exposing the entire notion of the Islamic caliphate and the political movement that is Islam that they're nothing but violent extremists where you can't even move the capital without them freaking out, chopping off heads, blowing people up, pushing them off buildings and murdering people. So it's almost like a perfect 60 chess move from Trump again. Absolutely. I'd say that um, in regards to uh, uh, Islam and the uh, rest of Islam um, and Christianity and everything that's happening, you can view it as a philosophical uh, construct you have um christianity you're trying to realize um a very basic you know what i'm sorry will i'm sorry man i know you were waiting but we just got a bad phone connection and i just could not understand what you were trying to say thank you so much for that call let's go to jay calling in from tulsa oklahoma go ahead jay oh and great fan of yours uh i'm gonna make it as quick as possible i'm gonna start with a quick anecdote 1992 or 93, I had a close family member, we'll call him Dag. He was in a fancy Little Rock restaurant and had someone at his table say, these people are evil, referring to the Clintons right after Bill was elected. And my, I'm sorry, Dak laughed it off as if it was a joke. And this lady at his table replied, no, you don't understand. Look over at that table. That's the Stevens table. And this is a very prominent family in Arkansas. And she said, these people are evil. Look at that empty seat. That's someone who mysteriously committed suicide. Now, I don't know if, who this person was. It may have been Vincent Foster or, or uh, it, John Markle. I don't know. I, I've been trying to figure it out. Or, uh, anyway. or the, young, the young child that wound up dead whose mother believes that he accidentally witnessed a Clinton drug deal and got murdered because of it. Right. And this was almost 25 years ago. So... Um, I know you can't, no, I'm, I'm just quick as possible, uh, Seth Rich, WikiLeaks proved, has proven that he was their source, as far as I'm concerned. Peter yeah, and then, uh, and then, uh, what's her name, Donna Brazil mentioned Seth Rich in the book? Right, and, and Peter W. Smith, uh, I believe he might have told one of his friends, I will never commit suicide. Then he commits suicide, after he's mm -hmm. about to hack into her emails that she deleted. Klaus Eberwine, we know in the United States, if someone dies before testifying, especially after spending their own time to travel to testify, it's historically been... Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, Jay, you are absolutely brilliant. I don't think anyone has ever proposed this. There needs to be some sort of legislation, like some sort of life insurance or life support legislation whenever you're called to testify in some criminal hearing. I mean, that, exactly. is, that, that is it. There needs to be some sort of thing here because how many people have magically disappeared right before they're about to testify against the Clintons? 40? 50? More, to get, there's more than anybody could ever count because their body count is, is actually censored. You, none of us know. 
And then there's a guy, Joseph Misfoot, who just uh, disappeared in Rome, Italy, after claiming he had dirt from the Russians on the Clintons. And, and he just magically disappears. And, of course, CNN is shaming him, saying he's some horrible, uh, you know, you know, if Hillary Clinton, if Hillary Clinton was some sort of low life drug pusher or drug dealer or something like that, I think she's everything then, from murderer to that. But that's what I'm saying. If she was just some sort, thank you for the call, Jay. If she was just some sort of, you know, low life drug pusher or, you know, I, I don't know. No, 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 folks. I want Hillary Clinton behind bars because I'm sick of people dying. Do you understand? I mean, this isn't like. Oh, let's put Hillary Clinton behind bars. I don't like her politics. It's no, this woman is sickly and deeply corrupted to the point where she will have as many bodies buried as possible to keep her criminal operation under wraps. In fact, I'm to a point now where if you just monitor what Bill Clinton does and says, even like year, like the, the last two years during the campaign, I think Bill's afraid of her. I think Bill Clinton is scared to death of this woman. I mean, look at some of the things that Bill Clinton says that just kind of go under the radar, and you're like, wait, what? What did he just say? Is he calling out? Wait, wait, what? Like saying, oh, you know, someone asked Bill about House of Cards, and he says it's 99% accurate, except you can't get a bill passed through Congress that quick. Folks, I mean, you know, it's no secret what the Clintons are doing. How many books have been written about these people? So, I'm sorry, every day that passes that Hillary Clinton still walks free and not in jail, I lose tolerance and I lose a great deal of patience. Folks, please support us at InfoWarsStore.com. They're trying to censor us. They're trying to shut us up. You know they'd love to see Alex Jones six feet underground. Support us at InfoWarsStore.com. Bring InfoWars to the next level. Alex Jones puts his money where his mouth is. He builds new studios. He advances the broadcast. He adds new shows. He hires more crew. He hires more reporters. That's where your money goes when you support us at InfoWarsStore.com. We're going to keep fighting. We're not going to back down. We're not going to kowtow to political correctness. We're not going to kowtow to liberal bullying and leftist terrorism. In fact, on the other side, I've got a caller who just got attacked by a leftist terrorist. We're going to go to his eyewitness account put these buzzwords out there they just initiate these buzzwords which then initiates a response and then it's okay well why did you take down kate steinley's memorial well because it was alt-right it was white nationalist oh it can't just be people that care about kate steinley that that are upset she's dead no now if you're white you're immediately a Nazi, white supremacist, alt-right, so you don't get a memorial. Nobody gets to mourn about you. You're basically just a piece of trash. In fact, you can just get murdered. You just, I mean, just murder him. Just murder Kate Steinle, and then her murderer walks away without even a manslaughter charge. And then she doesn't get a memorial. She doesn't get a march. She doesn't get the outcry of the liberal media. Nothing from the ACLU. Hmm. And then this is how you respond. This is the way to do it. After Steinle verdict, Representative Rokita unveils bill to imprison officials who shelter illegal immigrants. This is, I mean, this is so overdue. The, honestly, the, start jailing the Nancy Pelosi. Start jailing the Rahm Emanuels. Start jailing the Governor Jerry Browns. These are the people that need to be held responsible for the failing liberal inner cities. Harvard Millennials, now biggest voting group in US, two to one Democrat. This is a new study from Harvard. Apparently most people in my age group are Democrats. Very sad, very, very sad. And two thirds of the millennials, which is I guess the two to one Democrat number that they have from this study, would like to see a Democrat controlled Congress. All right, I've got to do something about people in my age group. I can't let them be victimized by brainwashed uh, media. All right, so everything coming out about Manafort, or excuse me, uh, Mueller's team, they're totally biased. They totally hate Trump. It's totally a political witch hunt. And now Peter Stroke is going to be a household name, I'm guessing, when he gets investigated. He might be, uh, well, let's just say keep that name in mind. Uh, Southern California is getting hit with more wildfires. They just cropped up overnight. It's now a terrible disaster. Uh, we'll continue to monitor that terrible situation. Scott Walker is moving ahead with a plan to drug test food stamp users. At first, I didn't like that idea because now that's just more government money. But then I realized something. 
these bums aren't going to do a drug test to stay on food champs. They'd, they'd rather stay high. <laughs> so this is actually going to work perfectly because now I guarantee you, even though it's already happening under Trump, food stamp users will go down in Wisconsin because they don't want to get drug tested. Bet your bottom dollar these people would rather continue to pay money for drugs than get the food paid for by their government. You guarantee that. Uh, three and almost a half million dollars coming out of the statement of expenditures from the special counsel's office. It is now up almost seven million dollars. The fake, phony, anti-American, treasonous Russian collusion probe into President Trump and his team has now cost us seven million dollars to pay for treason. Democrats drop clean Dream Act amnesty demand. Oh, the Democrats lose again. The Clean Dream Act. I love clean. It's the Clean Dream Act. It's clean. It's sustainable. They just put their buzzwords in on everything and think that they can indoctrinate everybody into believing it. Not going to work. Christmas market canceled in France because they couldn't pay for the security from the radical jihadists. So the radical, loving, peaceful Muslims blow up Christmas uh, markets and run them over with cars. So France had to cancel theirs because they can't afford to protect themselves. Well, that's what you get in France when you uh, have a income cap. All right, let's go out to the phone lines. Let's go to Cody in North Carolina who got attacked by a loving leftist. Cody, what happened to you? I don't know. This day of the show, thanks for taking my call. Yeah, I just wanted to tell you the story. Um, so I was at this, this little fast food restaurant. It was uh, Chick-fil-A. And... I saw this guy. He was a um, real straight lace looking guy, almost like a fat boy looking guy. Not your typical Antifa degenerate looking person. Mm -hmm. Jeans, blue je uh, uh, sneakers, blue jeans, gray hoodie. But on his gray hoodie, in red on the front, was a hammer and sickle. And above that, it said sharing. And below that, it said is caring. And so he was leaving, and as he was walking by, you know, maybe I shouldn't have done this, but I, I just couldn't keep it to myself. In a real calm voice, in a real civil manner, I just looked at him and I said, uh, young man, I find your shirt to be real offensive. And so I told him that, because I did find it offensive. And yeah, so he probably he would have gotten stopped. investigated in the 70s for a hoodie like that. So he stopped, and he said, well, what do you mean, man? And I said... Well, yeah, man. you want me to ask? So I said, well, personally, I think of that symbol as representing the death of tens of millions of people. And I don't understand why you would portray that in a positive way. Come on, he man. He pulls his phone out and he starts videotaping me and he says, he starts egging me on. He's like, well, what do you got? Give me your rant. Give me your rave. So I told him, I told him what I thought. I said, what I, I, I repeated myself. And, and he started pumping his fist in the air and he started making funny faces. And I said something like, you know, you don't have any response to anything that I'm saying. I mean, this is just insecurity on your part that you're just filming me hiding behind this phone. So and he had the typical out. tactics. Did he attack you? Well, this is what happened. He left, and that was the end of it. This was Saturday night. Sunday morning, I was at a coffee shop. And just by sheer coincidence, I was sitting outside. They have these chairs on the sidewalk. So I'm on the sidewalk, and just by sheer coincidence, the same guy walks by, wearing the same thing, wearing the same gray hoodie. And this time, he stopped. And he, I'm sitting on the, and, and I looked at him, but I didn't say anything to him the second time. He stopped. He, he, he stood over me, and he said, he was getting mad immediately. He went straight to mad. Why'd you harass me last night? Oh, huh? what's your problem, man? Like, he thought about it all night and decided to get mad <laughs> the next morning. <laughs> and and <laughs> he was like, why did you harass me? What's your problem, man? So I stood up, and I have a real bad disability. So I, I have what's called ankylosis spondylitis. I have a real bad hump back. I mean, I'm obviously no threat to anybody. And so guy, a loving leftist terrorist attacked somebody with a physical disability? An obvious physical disability. And he, he was obviously 50, 60 pounds heavier than me. Pretty, pretty muscular guy. I wow. Well, you know, and this is all created. Thank you so much for the call, Cody. I'm sorry I got to yep. drop you. I want to squeeze Marsha in here. Marsha uh, apparently is a young girl, 10 years old, who wanted to call into the show. Let, let's go to the youth. What What is the youth of America thinking, Marsha, in California? Um. Hello. I'm actually a boy, and my name is Marshall. 
All right, I'm going to have to fire some of the staff here today. They really butchered the names. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead, Marshall. Um, I really like your reports, and could you make a decaf coffee on your store so I could get some? Wow. All right, Marshall from California. Hey, what's school like for you, Marshall? I go to SF Public Montessori on Jackson Street. All right, well, I didn't ask you where, but I hope that it's good and you're not falling into the liberal indoctrination. Hey, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for the kind words. Marshall, Marshall wants some shade-grown decaf coffee. What are we going to do for Marshall, the 10-year-olds that want the coffee? All right, Info Warriors, you stay classy. We'll be back tomorrow.